now, Martha Coakley has been the presumed front runner in the race for governor. But her second place finish at the Democratic State Convention earlier this month raised questions about her support from party diehards. And yesterday's rebuke from the SJC raises new questions about her prospects. Yesterday's ruling could pose trouble for Martha Coakley, who argued as attorney general that the casino repeal shouldn't be on the ballot. But afterward, the AG tried to accentuate the positive. Uh, I am pleased uh, that the Supreme Judicial Court has ruled on this issue of great interest to voters in Massachusetts. But Charlie Baker, the likely Republican nominee, says Coakley's position suggested bad legal judgment or worse. Either she got really bad legal advice or there's something else going on here. Well, the SJC ruling is just one of several political stories making headlines this week. Here to hash them out are Jeff Simone, the executive director of the Massachusetts Federation of Young Republicans, and Mara Dolan of the Mass Democratic State Committee, and Adam Riley of WGBH News. Now, this whole thing has sort of been turned on Martha Coakley. People say, oh, this is embarrassing. But, you know, I look at the SJC and think, yeah, you know, it, it, it's a legal ruling. She made one legal ruling. I don't think she had an agenda when she made her original ruling. I really don't. I mean, I, I you know, and, and, and to me, you know, I'm not even sure they got it right, if you want to know the truth, but it's a legal ruling. Well, a unanimous decision yeah. is, I mean, that, that's rather forceful, and a unanimous decision that calls her legal rationing, or rationale, pardon me, her legal thinking into question is also, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a little bit of an embarrassment, but that being said, I agree with you that it's a reach to suggest, as I've heard Charlie Baker do, he did it on our mm -hmm. air today with uh, Jim Browdy and Marjorie Egan, suggesting that either she got it wrong, legally speaking, or there's something else nefarious yeah, yeah. going on. As he tried to explain that, I think the gist was something like, you know, on Beacon Hill, this is what the insiders have wanted, and she's enthralled to the insiders. That wasn't exactly how he put it, but that seemed to be the mm -hmm. gist, and I think that's a, a bit of a reach. Well, I'd say that the, the long-term political ramifications are, are a little bit, uh, have, have more legs uh, than this specific story. Um, I mean, the, now that casinos are on the ballot uh, in November, um, you're going to get a different demographic of a voter coming sure. out, and that's going to definitely hurt the Democratic nominee, whether it's Martha Coakley or not. It's going to help Charlie Baker and Republican statewide candidates. Mm -hmm. I don't think she was disingenuous when she said she was pleased with the decision. This would have been much tougher for her if this hadn't been on the ballot. She would have been the scapegoat for all of the folks who want to keep casinos out of Massachusetts. And this is an issue where Steve Grossman has been talking a lot about how she's a prosecutor. She needs to be more of a defense attorney and step up and defend herself against these charges. This helps Don Berwick, too. Yeah, yeah. Don Berwick. Yeah. No, he's been the, the clearest, I should say, anti-casino voice out there. He's a Democrat, but he's been quite consistent and clear about it. Yeah, since the convention, uh, Martha Coakley has had to defend uh, this position of leader in the polls, but while coming in second place, uh, it adds some credibility to both Grossman and Berwick's campaign, and you know, much like the U.S. soccer team, you know how tough it is to protect the lead. Mm -hmm. So but of course, uh, Grossman never really took the position about whether this should be on the ballot. That's so he, and he's he equivocated. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and Baker, it's worth mentioning, is not really anti-casino either. He thinks there should be one, which is what he said when he ran against Deval Patrick mm -hmm. last time. But he also said today that he would vote against repeal. So it's not like he's going to be a natural option for people who, you know, really hate the idea of casinos coming to mass. I'm actually curious, what's the demo you think is going to come out that will benefit Blue Baker color. more than? Well, yeah, I'd say people who uh, maybe have a chip on their shoulder about government that might otherwise not in a midterm year, uh, non-presidential election year. So there's some, for, for instance, for Charlie's position, he's in a, he's in a good position because there's room for nuance uh, in this. He can still say, let's start with one, let's go back, maybe revisit it, send it back to the legislature. There's there's a lot of room to... Uh, who thinks this is going to be repealed? Do you think it's actually going to be... I repealed? think it's going to be repealed, but there's a fascinating parallel with both parties in that the likely nominee for both parties supports the casinos. They each have a nominee. Mark Fisher is on the running group and uh, on the Republican side, on the Democrat side. Don Berwick, in both instances, those people were supported by their conventions and not the one who's ahead in the poll. Of course, th we've seen this before. I mean, remember many times that, what was his name, Pierce, who got the nomination and then Bill Weld won the election. So, right. Yeah, well, it doesn't but, necessarily matter. And also, Fisher wasn't supported by his convention in the way that Steve Grossman was. I mean, true. Steve Grossman won the convention. Fisher managed to get on the ballot. Also, we don't know what kind of money is going to come into play 
for this ballot question from both sides. Yeah, a lot, a lot. All right, well, Martha Coakley is also in the news after reaching a deal that allows Partners Healthcare, the state's biggest healthcare network, to acquire South Shore Hospital. Coakley says by striking a deal, the state is reducing the negotiating power of partners, limiting its ability to acquire physicians and controlling costs across its entire network. But critics say the deal doesn't go nearly far enough. So, I mean, the critics are saying that this is actually creating a, a monopoly. And so, well, the acquisition is going forward. She, she's trying to put a positive spin on this by saying, oh, well, you know, we're not going to let them acquire positions and that kind of thing. But they, they are acquiring the hospital. They're giving a hospital. They're going to cap uh, cost increases across the partner's network to inflation or below, right? They're going to cap uh, price increases, I believe, the South Shore Hospital, also to inflation or below. The deal is going to let uh, providers negotiate with partners as separate entities, not just one partner's network, but different parts and partners. But here's the problem. As I just tried to run through the, you know, yeah. the list I've memorized of what's, what's maybe good about the deal, I saw all your eyes glazing over, my own eyes <laughs> glazing over. And that's why I'm not sure how, how hot button an issue this is going to yeah. be in the race, because people know healthcare is important, but it's so, so important. Well, what it does is it, it opens up uh, an opportunity for Don Barwick and, and the progressive elements of the Democratic Party to really go after on this issue, and the fact that she made a deal. Mm -hmm. And when you make a deal, instead of maybe stick to your guns, uh, this is looks like another defeat for her, and, uh, and it could be trouble with the... Base. Of course, he's, his big message is single-payer health care, and some people say, well, that's you know, monopolistic in itself. There is going to be a debate on that because Martha Cookley has now said, well, the people who say that it's going to save money aren't right. But even if you if you simplify the partner's deal, it does expand the number of hospitals that they have. This is an organization that Martha Cookley herself referred to as a political goliath. It does cap the rate, the rate at which they can raise, but they themselves said that they would save $18 million. Well, if they're saving $18 million, why do they need to raise their prices up to the rate of inflation? The deal itself is... Because everything is for profit. I don't care if it's non-profit, not-for-profit. Everything is for profit in the medical industry. And, and, that's, and that's the argument for single payer. Another right? reason I think people not, might not be going crazy about this, and I should disclose here, my wife actually is a partner's employee. I'm not trying to carry water for partners <laughs> here. Having said that, um, people don't like their health care costs going up and up. You know, uh, we all know firsthand that insurance costs are rising. It's kind of brutal sometimes. But that being said, people tend to want to go to partners' facilities. If you get you know, a serious illness, mm -hmm. you're thinking probably right off the bat of going to a lot of different partners', house, partners hospitals like MGH. So while people might not like what partners' market dominance is doing structurally, they don't necessarily dislike partners itself. I think my eyes started to glaze yeah. when we were going into <laughs> right. but, but the, uh, I think the... The political ramifications for Martha Coakley is, it, again, it's just another uh, ding against her that it's a loss. Um, it opens her up for attacks uh, from Don Berwick especially, uh, and it's going to erode her lead. Are you cynical at all about the timing of this? I mean, the SJC ruling about casinos comes out, and then, like, within an hour and a half, Martha Coakley's office issues this statement about the partner's deal, and it's like, well, no one will pay attention to that because everybody's going to be focused on it. Uh, I'm not that cynical <laughs> no. about it. I think it's just a bad week for uh, Martha Coakley. I, was, I mean, again, she has to stop being a prosecutor. She has to be a f defense attorney on these issues. It's very yeah. tough. Yeah, it's very tough. Yeah. All right, well, two years ago, Democratic Congressman John Tierney narrowly fended off a challenge from Republican Richard Tissay, despite extensive coverage of his wife Patrice Tierney's legal problems. Now Tissay is taking on Tierney again, and a new poll out of Emerson College shows him leading Tierney among likely voters. So... We saw this happen the last time. Does anybody think, do you think that this is a, a more serious challenge than it was the last time? Uh, absolutely. It doesn't look like there's a, a third-party candidate involved, which did siphon away some potential votes uh, for Richard in that race. Um, and these, these polls tend to stay static going into the summer. So as the summer months drone on, people kind of check out. Mm -hmm. And it may stay just about the same until Labor Day. Uh, again, Richard Say has a, an incredible fundraising machine. Uh, he's ahead, uh, I believe, of John Tierney in the fundraising he's uh, department. He's a Republican, though. Uh, yes, it's, it's never easy. Day. It's all. It's never a slam dunk for Republicans in Massachusetts. But uh, he's he's in as good a position as he can be. He's not just a Republican. He is a Republican who claims to be a moderate, and yet he has formed a political action committee with Frank Junta up in mm -hmm. New Hampshire. He's a Tea Partier, so for Richard to say to come forward and say I'm a moderate isn't just isn't going to fly. Bring he me Jinta. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Well, yeah, but 
I mean, why is he fundraising with someone like that? If he's really a moderate, this is a guy who boycotted the Republican state convention because of the positions in their platform on choice, on marriage equality. But voters know that if he goes to Congress, he's going to vote with the Republican leadership because he's going to have to. Just two quick points I would make. Uh, to say was getting a lot more help from the media last time when yes. Patrice Tierney's legal woes were making headlines day after day after day. He's not going to have that mm -hmm. this time to help him, as far as we know. And in addition, to say I think is is probably very appealing on many issues to people. Likeable guy. He can be a bit laconic, yeah. however. And yeah. I want to remind you all of this campaign ad that he ran down the whole spread <laughs> last year. I think we have video of it. I really hope we have video of it. Yeah, we do. Okay, we have. Nice. So speaking of eyes glazing over, <laughs> yeah, like the ad, sometimes like the man to his detriment. Again, very likable guy, attractive candidate in many ways, but I think he has a. a, a yeah, well, it's just interesting to me that the polls are showing him that close when you're not you're not getting the media attention. Not not we're not hammering John Tierney over his. Emerson offshore. College. Did you know they did polls? And it's a midterm year. Yeah. Don't forget, it's a midterm year. Last year was a presidential election right. year. We'll stay on this. I'm last last cycle, excuse me. Jeff Simone and Mara Dolan and Riley. Thanks so much.